So we make our way back comfortably. Begin to allow a couple of really good deep breaths to flow. So play with the lungs, how deep can they expand? And just feel that nice, comfortable release. It's like all of our cares are released out of our system with our exhales. With this deep flowing breath, we take a quick moment to connect with our intention for today. The idea we're working on today is deep meditation. And we're approaching it almost like a little scientific experiment. Our question is, as my body feels increasingly more stretched, more elongated, all those muscle fibers are feeling good, does it make it so that my mind can relax deeper in my meditation? And so we'll take a couple of meditative pauses as we go through class just to lay down or sit or even stand and just close our eyes for a minute or so just to see how, how relaxed and how deep we can go inside. And so to kind of set up our scientific control to our experiment, let's allow ourselves for a moment to just relax the body. I'll progressively guide us through relaxing different parts of the body. And then I'll give us about a minute or so just to be relaxed right here, right now, just to see kind of without any stretches at all, see how deep we can go. And so we start off our breath flowing nice and deep. Let's relax our toes. Relax our feet. Calves. Thighs. Hips, belly, chest, shoulders, arms and hands, neck, and some of those facial muscles. The jaw, the tongue, inner and outer corners of the eyes. So as we're just laying here relaxed, we'll be here about a minute or so. Just see how deep you're able to kind of get in a meditative experience. Another good inhale. And exhale. So here, let's begin some of our initial stretches for class. So let arms go all the way to the back wall. And then shoulders will start to go right. And shoulders will go to the left. Let's take that huge side body stretch to each direction. Building all those muscles on the side of our body get a good chance just to stretch. Good. As we take our spine back through the center, start to bring the right knee into the chest. Our hands are hugging around that knee, trying to pull that right knee close to the right shoulder. Sometimes here it's that active pull, that's what feels good. Other times, think about those toes, helping that ankle have a chance to loosen up some spots that are tight. So 
when you feel ready, let this right leg start to stretch up to the sky. That awesome stretch on the back side of the leg. All those muscle fibers speaking to us. Good. Give it another huge inhale. And then exhale. We're pulling this right leg so far back past this back end of the fabric that when we slide our foot over to that back left end, our foot hooks on that back end of the fabric by the ears. Once the foot is hooked, it's like a <laughs> pigeon pose. You swivel the knee up to the side. When the foot's hooked, you you grab onto that shin, and just depending on how your knee feels, you pull that shin in. So it's like a big pigeon. So it should be swiveling in rather than hooking out. So right foot hooking on back left. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got it. Give it a couple of breaths. Like these initial moments to stretch are an invitation to tune into our body. Notice the spots that need the attention the most. The extra care as we gradually work our way toward the class. I'm doing a good inhale. Nice exhale. And then let's free out this right leg. Maybe give it another stretch up to sky. And then we drop right foot downward. When it's there, left knee comes in. Give it a good hug. Inviting that knee close to left shoulder. Maybe some foot rolls. Simple rolls. You're ready. Left leg starts to work its way straight up to the sky. Feel that good stretch. I love it when I do these types of stretches first thing in the morning. It's, it's almost like that's when my body needs it the most. When you first wake up, things are so tight. So giving it plenty of opportunity just to stretch. Good. When you're ready, left foot hooks to the back right part, so swiveling it over, hook it, and then slide the shin in. And once again, feel that deep breath flowing. Good things happening within. Enjoy another beautiful inhale. Exhale, start to free out this leg. Maybe stretch up to sky. And when you're ready to drop it down, leave both legs inside for a moment. Hands reach up, grabbing the fabric. We pull our upper body to sit up upright. Once we're sitting, we stretch over those two straight legs inside the fabric. You'll notice since the hips are the heavy part of the fabric, it's natural for the knees to want to bend a little bit. Sometimes that leads to a really good stretch for the low back. If you want the hamstring stretch to be deeper, your goal is to try to straighten the legs out. So kind of play with it based on how your body is communicating with you. The head's dropping forward, maybe give the right ear a chance to get a little closer to the right shoulder. And drop the head down heavy. 
Lift through the left shoulder. And drop it down. Let's go two more breaths. Just relaxing right here. Beautiful. Starting to sit up. Let's kick our feet free off the front end. And let's take a nice initial inversion for our body. So take your thumbs, the back, the fabric right behind your back. We're keeping the fabric right about at pant line. So if it goes higher, try to push it to pant line. And then when you're, you've got it there, you lean halfway back to try to lock it in place right there. Regrip on. So it's just let's try this closer. So you're gripping further. So if you're going to this one, go to this. Yeah, you got it. Okay, last step is you continue to tilt over backwards, let the legs go wide. So make sure you don't come out. And then feet wrap around. Once you've got the feet wrapped, your hands are safe to let go. So inversions have so many benefits to the body. Pretty much any system you could name. We could talk about the benefits that inverting brings. But especially the back. Letting those vertebrae have space. Generally, back pain starts to happen when the the discs compress themselves, so this gives us so much more space. Now, there's existence for being you here. You can try a slightly different spot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, there's like one spot that feels perfect. Okay. Yeah. If that wasn't the one. That's the, the limiting factor. And note that in aerial yoga, you will have different poses that um, that kind of give your body a different massage. So at first, sometimes those massages are intense, but as you keep on coming back, the, the massage that the fabric gives you gets better and better to the point where it's almost like, like you want it. You're like, I really, it's like getting into that fascia stretch that you're like, oh yeah, I want that so bad. And also notice not a competition with anybody else. This is just you listening to your body to know how long to be here. So some people will naturally be longer, some people will be shorter, and that's okay. All of it's good.
Good. So we're at that spot. Most of us are up. So we take recovery time after every inversion. That helps to reset our blood pressure, make sure everything's back to normal before we move on. So always know in my classes, you can stay longer if it feels like I'm moving on before your body is ready for it. So this, this is kind of your way to help me know how you're doing type of a thing. So stay here. Eventually you'll help me know when you're starting to feel good, your systems are giving you good chuck marks. When you get to that spot, you'll let me know by sitting upright and that'll kind of be our, our little cue to indicate to me how it is. Looks awesome. So, and I'll start talking about where we're headed shortly. So we're gonna do a couple of things that build up a little bit of the strength, build up some of our, our circulation in our system, help us get a little bit stronger. And so think of these as like a little preparation to get toward our next meditation we're gonna take in a little bit um, by helping our body to kind of be more energized. So sometimes we feel sleepy in our meditation and it's not that helpful. So that's what this little energizing spot is gonna be. So. Try to take a boat pose, the knees come up, hands can be on the fabric or floating free. And so from here, what we're gonna do is some nice bicycles. So one leg circles out, second leg circles out. Keep breathing the whole time. Here's 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, drop the legs down, grab onto the fabric, and then that'll help us lift our hips right up and out. Note that that's kind of the easy way to come out. If you try to just dive forward since your toes can't touch the ground, it makes it that slight chance of face diving. So let's go ahead and leave fabric over the front of the shoulders. And we're gonna do a little bit of arm strengthening. So arms circle around like a big hug, wrap around your head, and then circle that way around the fabric. I like to do two wraps, so I've got a part kind of supporting my wrist and then a part to go into my hands. Good. So this will be slightly different based on your arm strength. The, the easier version is actually even gripping lower so that you can just kind of lift up and down. Harder would be to try to grip higher so that you can try to go toward a flex arm hang and then dropping down for a little break when you need it. We can take, like different people will be able to hold differently, so just do what you can do. We'll be here for a little while. So nice inhale prep. Exhale, let's try it out. Keep breath flowing, never hold the breath. And usually after a cycle or two gets harder. And so we'll try for just a couple of bonus ones if you're at that hard spot. Just try to go up and down a couple more. It's like when you get past that strong range and you just do a couple bonus beyond that, such a huge benefit for the body. So if you can handle maybe two or three more hops, let's try to go for it. Get the breath going. Maybe one last one. Oh, good work. Unwinding the hands, let's just shake it free for a second. Let's give our hands a little wrist stretch. So clasp the fingers together. And then pull the left hand toward you so that the back of the right wrist is stretched. Switch it to the left wrist. Feels good to have that heart flowing. Good, flip it around the other way and then try to pull the left wrist back so it's that other side of the right wrist that's stretching. Good, and then do the same for the left. Awesome, as you release, go ahead and free yourself from fabric, do a couple of nice rolls for the wrist. Come around behind. <laughs> you find the little bug? <laughs> Thanks for saving it. <laughs> okay, let's take our um, right ankle inside the fabric. 
So the leg is trying to work its way towards straight. Once you're there, you've kind of got two options. Option one is just slide the hand gets closer and closer to that thigh. You feel that, that really helpful stretch. Option two is more of a splits action, so the hands would slide up, and then you start to sink your weight forward. So you choose based on how your legs are feeling this morning. Keep that good, steady flow of breath going. Good, if you went forward at all, take your weight over your standing leg, rising back up. We're going to turn to face you guys toward the back door. So your, your left toes start to turn to the left. The leg is still straight. This is, our hips are in a much more open position. So on this further left strand of fabric, slide the right hand down, left hand up. This keeps our chest open. So once you've got that position, if you want more, you're welcome to sink your weight forward for more of a side pose. Yeah, just like that, nice and open. That's the way. Good. Still facing to the side. Squeeze your inner thighs together. You're over your standing leg. Once you're there, slip the fabric down to your thigh. And you can still grab onto that left strand of fabric. We're going to sink toward warrior two. Note that if you're a little bit too far back, it might feel like a tremendous lunge. So if you want it to be easier, scoot closer. But the idea is just start to let that front thigh go forward. We're in that inner thigh stretch again. Like a warrior two, maybe the right arm goes forward and the left arm opens up back. That right arm, I usually push the tricep directly into the fabric. Core is lightly engaged. Good. A nice inhale. Exhale, grab onto the fabric, squeeze the thighs together. You travel back over your leg, face back forward, both hands up high. Sink your whole weight forward in this forward direction. That takes us into the psoas stretch. Take a good inhale. Awesome work. So exhale, keep the hands gripping tight. Start to lift up your back knee until you can gently set that left knee on the floor. Good. So this is setting us up for camel, a half camel. So let's start off with right hand gripping over on left strand. If you think you might want the additional help, tuck those back toes already. That gives you a couple of extra inches. This left hand goes to left heel. So feel your hips pushing forward as your heart arches up. Beautiful. And let's go for a revolved version. So left hand grips on right strand now. Right hand goes to that heel. It's twisted. The floor is too much. You can always just put the hand on the low back. Good work. Both hands grip up on fabric. Last thing here, we're gonna to try to make our way down to the floor. So grip on enough that that left leg can pop out in front of you, and then try to slowly lower down onto your back. You're still keeping that right foot hooked inside. Turn the toes up to the side to lock the heel. You got it. Okay, so hands on the floor by the hips. Right leg straight and long on the ground. There you go. That's, yeah, as soon as it does what you're trying to do, where it's on the heel, that'll help you out. 
that's it. Yep. You got it. <laughs> okay, we got it. We're all here, I think. <laughs> More or less. Okay, so left leg goes straight up to sky. Try to lift the hips directly up and down. Hips down, leg down. We're gonna go up to nine more. You don't have to do all of them. So up and up, down and down. Eight. Again, keep the breath flowing. Seven. Six. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Bring the left leg inside the fabric, toes turning out. The legs can be still, or you can have a gentle little swinging action going on, up to you. But this will be one of those little meditative pauses. So one thing that might be helpful to get you toward that deep mind state is to think of the breath. With every inhale, you think the word so, and the exhale, you think the word hum. Just letting that sound so hum mimic the breath. So maybe three more good breaths just to see how deep we can take the mind. Good. So after all three, drop the feet to the floor. Do a little crunch to grab the fabric. Once you've got a grip, you're gonna be allowed to do as many little mini pull-ups as you want. When your arms get tired, just walk yourself backwards to stand up. doing awesome. So no rush at all, it's left leg in when you're up, but if you're still doing your pull-ups, go for them. So if you're dropping hands down, that's a good option. If you're grabbing up, that's the splits option, so you choose. Notice how the breath helps us recover back toward that calm heart, steady breath. Good, so maybe one more good inhale. A nice exhale, and then squeeze the nice thighs together. We're back up on standing. Our hands grip over to the right side. We swivel our right toes to point to the right. And then we grip that right hand high, the left hand low. From that grip, if this is enough stretch, just stay. If you want more, sink some weight forward. What I love about Ariel is we have control over our level of difficulty that we take on. Good. Maybe just one more inhale. Nice exhale. 
squeezing our thighs together, slip the fabric back to thigh. This is the warrior two, so hips start to sink our weight forward. Maybe the front arm opens forward, maybe the back arm back, but you don't have to open up the arms. Hold on the whole time. Another beautiful inhale. Exhale, grab on, squeeze in our thighs together. A hand on each side to face forward. And then that same lunge in the forward direction. Inhale. Nice exhale, keeping a tight grip, gonna gently lower right knee down to the floor. Maybe tucking the back toes if you want that couple bonus inches. And then we start off with left hand gripping on the right side, right hand dropping to that back heel, for that gentle back. Good. Right hand circles up, grabbing left. Left hand to the back heel. And when both hands grab up, grab up, grip up high, step that left foot forward. Try to slide gently onto your back, keeping the heel hooked. We'll straighten out to lock it in place. Go ahead and flip it to the heel again. Emily, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to on the other side. That's the way, right there. Yep. <laughs> okay, so hands on the floor. Right leg up. Hips up. Hips down. Leg down. That's our key. Nine. And eight. Beautiful. Take a, take both heels inside. Before we go to the full meditation, we have one more little bonus challenge here. This is I, I call this frog legs. It, it's what it kind of feels like the legs going out to the side like a frog. So what we're gonna do is try to lift the hips up off the ground and stay. From there, knees bend out, heels slide in, and then straighten back out. Here's nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, and three, two, one. Good efforts. Roll the hips back to the floor. Take the right leg out, straight leg trying to come toward our body. Grab onto it. Give it that nice hamstring stretch. And then either leaving the leg straight to get into the IT band, let it cross over your body toward the left, or bending the knee for more of a spinal twist, rotate it to the, the twist. So either way, the leg is crossing over the body toward left. Beautiful. Right leg in, left straight leg coming directly up and toward the chest. Grab on, try to pull it in. Good. 
either leave the leg straight or bend it to take it across the body toward the right. Inhale, exhale, hips go to the floor. Right leg can come back inside, or sorry, the left leg can come back inside for a moment. Another little meditative pause. Maybe you're swinging the legs left and right. Maybe you're just staying in stillness, whatever feels nice for your meditative state. And perhaps take that same so hum as before, but try to make everything slower, like the slowest breath we can take. Notice if that helps you go deeper into the body. Three more breaths, about as slow as you can go. After all three, with the legs drop to the floor, we're crunching up to sit, and we're going to do a different grip this time. So this time, our grip goes like this, it's called a wrist lock, hands are in prayer position, dive the hands into the center of the fabric. Once you've got that, turn the thumbs down, scoop toward your face under, and then flip all the way up. Once you've got that flip, I like to separate about as wide as shoulders for a grip lock. Good. So you've got a couple of options. If both feet are planted, that'll be the easier option. Try to go up and down for a set of five, and then a break, and then five more. If you want to make it a bit harder, let one leg hover for your, for your five, and then we'll switch legs. Okay, so taking an inhale, exhale going up. Here's five, four, three, two, one, Good, you'll give your fingers a little break. When you're ready for the second, if you did one leg, switch legs. And take an inhale prep. Going up for five, four, three, two, one. Good, two straight legs in front. Let's free out our wrists. And take a nice, easy forward fold for the back. Especially let the head just drop heavy. That last little bit of weight of the head dropping down can help to pull those back muscles just a little bit nicer. And that slow, easy breath. We'll work our way up to stand. So grabbing the fabric, plant the feet. Let's work our way up. And here, let's take a nice inversion. Inversions themselves are a good meditation. It's almost like the brain can just let go of all of its thoughts. So we've got the fabric in front of each shoulder again. 
So it's super similar to the one we did earlier. In fact, if you want to sit inside the fabric and just do what we did earlier, that's fine. But for this version, we take your thumbs to take the fabric. For me, it's just a little bit lower than it was earlier. So instead of pant line, it's like sacrum. And then one foot steps forward, one foot back. So that when I bend my knees, I can do that half lean back to lock it in place. From here, I want to be under plumb line, so two or three baby steps forward, and then heads up, knees wide, feet wrap around. The moment the feet are around, hands are safe, let go. Good, yeah, if you ever, if you ever go rocking like crazy, that's just a sign, go, go a little bit closer to plumb line. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> Oh, look at you. That was so good. That was really good. <laughs> and just like before, I'll give you plenty of time for those that want it. Don't feel like you have to be pressured to stay as long as anybody else. Continue to just let those thoughts drop down, just like the gravity is pulling you down. I'm gonna give those that are upside down lots of time. So don't listen to what I'm saying if you're still enjoying upside down. If you're up, you're welcome to do just some nice little shoulder stretches. I'm crossing one arm, cross the other. Let the neck roll out, let the hand cross behind. There's all sorts of stretches you can do right here. Go so slow, good, use your core, you got it. Still no rush for those that are enjoying it. Those that have been out for a while, you can start to walk your feet forward so that your hips are under plumb line. You're just giving your spine a chance to just drop from here. So try to release all abdominal effort. The skeleton just drops down. And if little things help here, you could do things like rocking the knees in circles. You could twist the knees to one side, move to the other. You could take one ankle to the other thigh. So whatever feels good. 
And it's kind of your body being the limiting factor. The moment when it's like your your blood is getting cut off at your armpits, that's the moment to straighten your legs back. So walking all the way back until you're standing up on your own. And then come to the other side of the mat, turn around, face your fabric. You're finding the very top end of it again. Wave it out. When we face back forward, take your elbows inside the fabric. I like to make my elbows at least as high as shoulders, if not a little higher. And then you've kind of got some options of what to do here. One thing I like to do is walk here even past the top of my mat so my elbows pull out. Another option is a lunge, one foot forward, the other foot back. So it's just whatever helps those pecs and those shoulders open up nicely. Pull that upper back, stretching so good. And then we'll start to switch it out. So take your legs together, bring your elbows down into your chest, your, into your waist for a moment. Just roll the head a little bit left, a little bit to the right. Good. So we'll go into it again. You can either do the same option or if you did the lunge, take your second foot forward. Another good inhale, exhale, good. And then from here, we're preparing to come inside. So let's hook, um, we'll flip our wrist around so it's the thumbs. Now that are hooked, the fingers are on the outside. Take about five grips. Good, when we come to sit inside, we're going to take the heels into the front end, so feet are inside. The knees try to swivel out, kind of like a cobbler's pose. And then we try to walk our elbows back forward past the front end. It's kind of like a little frog shape again. So once you've got this, let the head go down, clasp the hands together, and then bring the hands around the back side of the head. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that'll just squeak, so it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, as you're curling into the shape, you feel that upper back, that spot kind of in between shoulder blades. You feel those good areas, get a little bit of extra space. And we've got another minute or so just to do any last stretches your body wants before our final Shavasana. So maybe this is back to leg straightening out, forward fold. Maybe we're laying all the way back, taking some of those initial hip stretches we did. Maybe you're doing a little twist, leaving one arm forward, twisting the other arm back. You've got some different options. Just take a minute or so to do any last things your body would love to do prior to its final relaxation. Let your body release, get all those tight stuff out.
So it's going to be very natural for some of us to drop into that Shavasana state before others. And that's beautiful. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Take all the time you want. When you feel like you're ready to, to drop into that, that Shavasana moment, let yourself try to play with how deep you can go in Shavasana. So if thoughts start to arise, maybe you just imagine those thoughts are like clouds, they come in, but then they float away and you're just here to enjoy the show, enjoy the beautiful weather. So don't feel so attached to whatever comes up. Just let yourself be the observer. Enjoying good inhales, good exhales. Got a few minutes just to relax together. So here we'll gradually begin to wake our body out of this beautiful, peaceful state. Just start off with a couple of good inhales. Be nice exhales. Getting to introduce little movements to fingers and toes. Ankles and wrists. And as we start to stretch out, we can feel our body, our shoulders moving right and left a few times. Sometimes it's nice to take an aerial fetal position. So what we do is we keep our body long, but we stack one hip on top of the other hip, rolling over to one side. Once you've done that, you can curl your body into a tight little ball. Then you can arch your spine back. It's almost like a cat cow helping the spine itself to wake up. So what I'll usually do is 
two or three good cycles to one direction and then eventually flip around, take a few to the other direction, evening out the spine. When you've completed those, you're welcome to start making your way up to a comfortable seated place. So you kick the feet off the front, grip on with your hands to help sit. I usually like to bring the hands in front of the heart, either inside the fabric or maybe a big hug, gratitude around the fabric. And so as the hands are here in front of heart, we take a quick moment to reconnect with that kind of scientific experiment that puts us off today. Question, as my body feels better, is, does my meditation get deeper? So we note the different points of class. And did our meditation progress with our body? It's the sense of curiosity that we can have. Maybe as we go through the rest of our day, we kind of take little pauses. Okay, what about right now? Could I go deep? Just kind of being playful and curious about our experience. Because in this way, we're learning about who we are and what we are. So with a sense of curiosity to lead us on, let's wrap up the time we shared together today with the sound of Om. Deep in Om. Om. May we be filled with light, happiness, and peace. Namaste. Namaste.